All right, here's my networking rack. And down below we have the home lab slash uh, server rack, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but as far as the networking equipment goes in this house, um, a little batch story, the house was built in 2001. So typical of that time uh, period, it had coax and phone lines ran to, you know, all the rooms. So within the first couple months living here, I ran all of the, um, all that cat six up there, uh, basically all the way to every bedroom on the second story, basically every room on the first floor, um, out to the garage. Uh, um, so it's all wired up. There's still a few runs I need to do down here in the basement before we eventually finish it. Uh, so I'm going to get that done. But, um, anyways, let's get into here. So as you can see, it's mostly ubiquity and um i think like how most people start out with ubiquity i you know i had the udm se here and one access point and, and now it's kind of snowballed into what you see here um, but anyways we got the pdu up top um, and then brush plate uh, and then usw 16 poe which i bought off facebook marketplace for 60 bucks uh, and this just basically uh, controls or not controls but runs some of the equipment that you see here uh, and then some of the runs go down into uh, the rack down below and it powers a poe camera that's in the basement uh, there's also this fiber run that goes out into where i will be building a shed this year so it basically runs um, the length of the house behind me and then 100 feet uh, into, the, into the backyard where the shed will be so i'll have uh, an access point out there um, and then down below the switch, uh, the patch panel, uh, beneath that we have the Enterprise 24 PoE, which is total overkill for what I need, but um, I really hate how uh, Ubiquity puts the all the jacks on one side of the switch on the Pro line. So I went with the Enterprise and um, it was actually in stock at Micro Center by me. So that was pretty cool. Um, and this line here actually runs up to my desktop in the second story office so it's connected at uh, 10 gauge speeds and it seems to work out pretty well over uh, standard cat 6 beneath that we have the usw aggregation switch another ebay purchase um, and then beneath that a uh, udmse so internet comes in here goes to the aggregation switch and from here it goes up to this one um, it goes to the two servers down below um, and then also to a point in the basement here where we'll be putting another office. Uh, so besides the ubiquity stuff here, we have a uh, HD home run uh, connect duo, which I've had for a pretty long time. Um, that is hooked up to a, a antenna that's up in my attic that I put up there. So it has a RG6 line ran all the way up, up in there along with the the uh, cat six and um works pretty well this is the amcrest um nvr which was my primary nvr for a long time uh, i've recently migrated everything over to blue iris uh, but i can still keep this in here so my wife can remote into the cameras and see them remotely beneath that we have two um, apple airplay expresses uh, the second generation and uh, I just use these as AirPlay 2 targets. So this one here is for my uh, rear patio. This one's for the front porch. And these are the amps for it. These uh, Fosi audio amps. They're inexpensive and uh, they work well for small, you know, outdoor speakers. Uh, kind of hard to see it, but that's the modem. Just chilling back there. It's um, wow. 1.2 gig service and um it's not bad it's, it could be much better but at least i have no data caps <laughs> like i did with xfinity so that's why i left them um so and the modem's free so free rental um, and then obviously two uh apc ups is here that kind of divvy up the the load between everything that you see in here so that's the networking side of things and then now we get to the server slash home lab side of things. So this is a, uh, a Dell APC net shelter case that I found on 
Craigslist for 50 bucks and it's really in great condition and it came with the key too. So now uh, what's in it? Um, well, I guess I should say why there's two separate racks. So initially I only had one PC down here and it wasn't this one initially either um, as my uh, true NAS server. And uh, I didn't really ever anticipate on, you know, racking some stuff or anything else. So I just bought this wall mounted one for all the networking equipment. Um, but then as, as I started to acquire more, I was like, okay, we probably should rack it. So it's in two separate ones. And honestly, I don't mind it. And it works out. So, uh, so anyways, here we have two HP Z840s. Uh, and they're both pretty similarly spec'd out. So they have the same processor besides, you know, one being a V3, one being a V4. Uh, but they're dual dual CPUs in, in each one. And they have 8-core, 16-thread CPUs. So whatever, uh, E4 or E5, 26, 67 or something like that. Uh, so between them, they have six, or be, each one has 16 cores, 32 threads each. Uh, which is way overkill for uh, this TrueNAS server, but um, I'm just going to run with it because they were both free. I just had to uh, buy RAM and the stuff that I put in it. In it. So uh, as far as storage goes in TrueNAS here, we have um, we have this icy dock bay up front here. So we have the um, SSD for the OS. There's two six terabyte Western Digital red drives in here, and um, they're unfortunately the SMR drives, which I didn't know about when I bought them back in 2020. Um, and I mean, they haven't really given me too much issues besides slow speeds. And I think the the built-in LSI HB, HBA that's in these things, I don't think they like them. It kept giving me errors. So I moved them to the SATA controller that's in here. Uh, so these were my main storage pools, these two drives here in a, in a mirror. They're my main storage pools for a long time and then started to get filled up. So then I bought the uh, the Dell MD1400 down there, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so we have this. There's a NVMe pool in here that has um, on it one of those Asus Hyper cards. Uh, there's four one terabyte uh, NVMe storage drives in it. And they're in just a stripe and... Uh, I use them for my Steam uh, library, so my PC upstairs uh, has access to it over the, you know, the 10 gig service. Um, and then I also use that just for fast storage if I need to copy stuff over to here. And then I can eventually move it to the spinning hard drives. Um, yeah, it's hooked up. Well, they're both hooked up 10 gig, like I said, up to the aggregation switch. Um, they both have a 1 gig copper. Uh, line up to the USW 16 that I use for wake on LAN if I need to. And, um, and then they're also both <laughs> hooked up to the APS UPS is up there. So when the power goes out, the, they will shut down. Um, talking about this one first here. So this is a Dell MD 1400 disc, um, array storage, I think DAS or JBOD too, it's just a bunch of disks, <laughs> really. Um, and uh, so there's eight drives in there out of the 12 total that it can fit. Uh, there's four, four terabyte uh, Dell SAS 12, um, or SAS 3 12, 12 gig drives that I have in a RAID Z1 for my Blue uh, blue Iris NVR storage, which is, um, I don't know, about 12, well, formatted probably about 10 gigs of, uh, or sorry, 10 terabytes of storage for the security cameras here, which is way overkill, but you know, the drives were only 25 bucks each off, off uh, eBay. Um, and then for my main storage pool, which is in the middle row, uh, we have four 14 terabyte uh, Western Digital uh, HC530s. Uh, they're SAS, you know, 12 gig drives as well. I bought those off eBay brand new for Oh man, I only paid like 145 bucks each for them. And um, so those are in the RAID Z1 as well. So there's like 32 terabytes or so of storage. So, you know, that stores them all in my Plex libraries um, and then all my other stuff, uh, which isn't much at the moment, but 
at least I have the space and I don't have to worry about um, running out of that anytime soon. Um, so that's what that is running. And that is connected up into the internal uh, LSI HBA that's built into these things. Um, you just have to buy the adapter that converts the uh, internal SATA ports into an SFF8088 connector that's on the back of the uh, uh, case. So it's pretty cool how HP um, did all that. And then in the middle is my Proxmox uh, hypervisor. And um, so that runs a few VMs and some containers. So uh, PyHole, Home Assistant, um, Ubuntu Server for Plex. Uh, what else? It has a Windows 11 VM. And then there's a Windows 10 VM, which is for uh, Blue Iris. Uh, Nginx proxy manager so I can uh, remote into or so I can access my uh, some of my services over the internet uh, that was pretty cool to set up so I can just go to a uh, go to my website and um, it will access whatever service I need and then um, there's the Windows XP VM but you know I didn't activate that one in time so now I have to recreate it um, as far as what else is in there, so the um, Ubuntu server VM has a Quadro P4000 passed to it for transcoding, um, which is overkill again, but it's a 1U card and uh, fits right in, in there nicely with all the other stuff that's in the back of it. And then uh, the Blue Iris VM, which is the Windows 10, has a uh, 1080 Ti, like a Dell Alienware, 1080 Ti that I bought off eBay and um, that was initially set up as like a remote storage or sorry remote gaming PC I was trying to mess around with um, you know shout out to Jeff at Craft Computing for all of his uh, videos so that kind of got me into Proxmox and all this stuff here um, I had I had the true NAS server here I've ran one of these since I don't 2015 when it was free NAS so I've gone through many iterations I think this is like the fourth uh, PC that I've had um, with with you know free NAS true NAS installed um, but uh, yeah that's it so I mean this thing's pretty maxed out as far as like IO um, the PCIe slots there's also a uh, PFSense VM that has a dual one gig uh, network card um, passed through to it and uh, that's kind of just set up as like a backup. So I guess if my UDM SE ever goes down and I need to order a new one or a replacement, um, I can fire up that VM and uh, just you know move some cables around and I'll have a, um, a router still. Uh, and then before I forget, just another Facebook Marketplace find. So another uh, UPS which these two are actually connected to power-wise, and then data-wise, they're connected to those two. Um, but that's about it for now, so I don't really anticipate buying it, anything else, but, you know, that's, that's what I think we all say, and then we end up buying more. Um, I think for the Home Assistant, I don't really run much with Home Assistant besides um, two automations. Uh, one is turning on my TV that's up um, above us and the receivers in the back of the room and it's connected with a uh, optical HDMI cable so the 4k signal still works um, and that doesn't pass the CEC command so uh, basically when the receiver turns on or off home assistant down here will turn my Vizio TV on or off which is cool and then uh, the other thing which might interest some people is um, this ESP32 here that I have running and basically tells me the level of the sump pump or sorry the sump basin how much water is in there using this uh, this is the boat uh, fuel level sender and it's just a straight cylinder with a, a thing that floats up and down on it and um, I might make another video on uh, how I did this uh, but basically in home assistant I can just look at my um, how much water, uh, water is in here so there's a backup pump in here in, in case you know something happens but it's always cool to track 
how often the pump is being used. And especially, I'm in Michigan, and we have snow melting right now, and tons of rain. Uh, and the pump is just going on and off constantly. So, uh, but yeah, that is the setup. And um, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, I guess before we go, so yeah, the Cat 6, I can just show you how I ran that since we're down here. So here's all the ethernet runs uh, for the house and there'll be more added to it. But uh, orange, all the orange ones go up to the second story. All the white ones uh, go to first floor and they come over here. And uh, like I said, still need to clean this all up, but um, there is where they all run up uh, past the first floor, past the second floor, up into the attic. And um, luckily there's a, a pretty large hole there. Um, unfortunately, between the first floor and the second floor, uh, I think it's only maybe like an inch or inch and a half. So the six uh, Cat6 six cables and the one coax is all I can fit between there. So I'm pretty much maxed out as to running um, running co or sorry ethernet upstairs and then um i guess before i forget too so access points there's three uh access points in the house um and i'll just put photos up up of them um and uh they're all ubiquity branded and um yeah i think that's it I always try to <laughs> remember if there's more or not but oh yeah sorry one more <laughs> there is a attic switch which is a usw flex um, up in the attic i'll th show a photo of it and uh, that basically was the main run for the access point on the second story now uh, the access point is powered off of that switch and then i have three more runs that i have to run to various rooms upstairs uh, just to get some more coverage uh, of ethernet on the other walls so but yeah i hope you liked it and um that's it